Hi, in the next of our series of mini lectures on design for electrical and computer engineers, we're going to be talking about block diagrams or functional decomposition. And the, the tool of a block diagram is really, I think, what distinguishes engineers from scientists and many other technical fields. It's a very important tool. And unfortunately, in college programs, we don't learn to master it nearly enough. The question we want to answer at the beginning is, why create a block diagram? What's the point of doing this rather than jumping right into designing and building things? Well, there are several answers to that. That block diagrams or functional decomposition allow us to represent complex systems in understandable ways. And the more complex the system, the more important it is to have a basic picture you can keep in your head of how the system works. And we'll see how that works with block diagrams in just a little bit. Block diagrams help the designer to clarify the function, not just the form. Both of these are important. But in building it, function really predominates, at least in the initial stages. And we'll see some examples of this in just a minute. Um, one of the things we know that distinguishes the discipline of design from other disciplines is the importance of exploring the solution space as quickly and efficiently as possible. And block diagrams are a wonderful method for a group of people to sit down with just pencil and paper and explore a solution space before they get to the expensive and time-consuming work of actually building things. And for this reason, block diagrams are very time and cost effective. The more time you spend doing your block diagram, uh, the faster your design will converge. <clears throat> it's important, since design is done by groups of individuals, that the entire design team understands the project. If one person makes a block diagram or everybody goes off without making a block diagram, there will be errors in communication that can be extremely significant and doom your project. So making a block diagram together as a team is very, very important to make sure everybody knows what they're doing. Um, it's also useful in assigning tasks to individuals and groups because once you break the function of a device up, teams or individuals can go off and work on individual functions and know how they fit into the larger project. So as an example of this function versus form debate, let's look at an example of a laser tag game. And we'll use this example uh, because we did it in class a long time ago throughout this example. Um, so this represents the form of a laser tag game. Notice there are some homemade weapons. We also have some optical sensors. The, the gun shoot out beams of light. Here we have sensors attached to a hat. The actual system is also composed of electronic circuit boards. Um, here's an example of a control board, and here's an example of a sensor board. And these pictures were downloaded from this website, and if you're interested in laser tag games, you can go and see the kits and things that they sell. But these images of the form that a laser tag game takes does not tell you as an engineer very much about how it functions on a level. And so throughout the rest of this demonstration or the rest of this presentation, we'll go through and look at how in the past a group of students have designed a laser tag game and how they did it, how they created a block diagram. <clears throat> so we start off when we're talking about block diagrams with three levels. And the first or highest level with the least detail is called a level zero block diagram. Um, you can see in a level zero block diagram, you simply have a black box, um, which is right here. So let's go ahead and write black box on here. And we also have inputs and outputs to the black box. Inputs are represented with in arrows, while outputs are represented without arrows. Um, we'll talk about the inputs and outputs a little bit more. And notice all the inputs and outputs are labeled. And so a level zero block diagram, the first step in creating a block diagram is just to identify your inputs and outputs, what needs to come out of your system as a whole. After this, you can get rid of the black box part and start to look at what's called a level one block diagram that really shows you the function of this. So let's go on and move our slide. And when we create a level one block diagram, this is what we get, where we've identified some of the pieces in color, which is a little bit hard to read. So let's go ahead and look at another picture here of a level one block diagram. <coughs> now, there are several things in a level one block diagram that are really critical if you're going to do a block diagram right. First of all, the blocks. And this is a block right here. This is a block right here. You can see why we call them blocks of a block diagram. These blocks are functional units. They actually perform a function. They may not look like anything. They may be completely invisible to the user because they're buried deep inside or even part of a printed circuit board. But notice on this block diagram that we have a functional unit that takes gun inputs. 
we have a functional unit for display electronics. We have a functional unit for LED drivers. We have a functional unit for gun interface. This unit happens to be a microcontroller, and so on and so forth. So a block diagram essentially takes a complex system and says, what are the functions that I need to implement to have this system work? And we make a block for each of those functional units, hence the name functional decomposition. You'll notice that the inputs and outputs of blocks are clearly labeled by arrows that come into and out of them. For example, we have one input going into display electronics, which is low battery, three more inputs coming from the microcontroller, and one output from display electronics running all the way over here to LED drivers. So the inputs and outputs of each of these functional units are clearly labeled on a block diagram. It's a good block diagram. You notice that the connections between the blocks are also clearly listed. Here we have a single wire that's a fire signal. Coming back the other way, we have a fire enable pin. Notice that when we have multiple wires that may carry signals, we're using a different type of line. Here, where we have IR optical output going to IR sensors, we used a dashed line with some details describing the light. So all types of inputs and outputs from blocks are represented, and the way the blocks are connected together is represented in one of these block diagrams. It's very important in a good block diagram, you give a fair level of detail, because this block diagram is a very valuable tool for debugging your system later on in the design process. Um, notice that also, external inputs and outputs are labeled on the block diagram. I happen to do it in blue here, but you can see we have buttons and switches and some data connectors on this block diagram, which are used to label inputs and outputs that the user would actually see. So a level one block diagram really gives a lot of detail about how the system functions, how it's connected, and acts as an aid in debugging. Let's move on to a level two block diagram, the next level down. And for an example, we'll take a look at our LED driver circuit here and see how that might be represented on the next level of detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside this box right here and draw another block diagram of how it works. As we do this and move on to the level two block diagram, we're now getting almost down to the schematic level where we have a microcontroller, a digital potentiometer, we even show some discrete components, a resistor as part of a voltage divider, and a, a light emitting diode here that are parts of the circuit, as well as a power FET driver. This does not give me enough information to actually make a schematic and build this circuit, but we're getting really close to it at this point. Um, so overall, what we see is going from level zero, which is the system as a whole, to level one, which is how the system functions, to level two, we get closer and closer to the detail necessary in order to actually create a schematic and actually create a functional unit. And so let me just conclude by, by stressing again that block diagrams are an extremely powerful tool to take complex systems and break them down into buildable pieces. With a level two block diagram, a good engineer should be able to make a schematic, test it, and plug it into a larger system. Block diagrams work very well in electronic circuit design, but there are some types of systems in which block diagrams don't work. And this type of approach will not work at all. And this is when the blocks are tightly coupled together, when changing one block changes signals or the blocks in the rest of the system. And many of, of, of mod things, such as lasers, for example, one part of the system is very, very dependent on choices made in other parts of the system. And the, the different parts are so tightly coupled together, the block diagram approach doesn't work. And hopefully at the end of the semester, we might have some time to talk about design methodologies for these tightly coupled and complex systems. We'll skip that for the time being.